blizzards, floods, murders, festivals, fires, and even scandal. 1996, the year that was. Yes, 1996, a year worth looking at again. Tonight, we'll be looking at the stories making news during 1996. Well, 1996 is a year Shenandoah Valley residents won't soon forget. The year started with one of the worst snowstorms of the decade, dumping over three feet of snow on the valley, causing school closings for a week, stranding motorists, and keeping people in their houses for days. Governor George Allen declared a state of emergency. National Guardsmen were deployed to the various localities to assist. Hospitals and medical centers across the state ask for volunteers with four-wheel drive vehicles to help transport doctors, nurses, and other staffers to work and to bring patients in for treatment. Road crews worked around the clock to just clear the interstate and primary roads, but it took days before they could clear secondary roads. The snowstorm was responsible for a lot of damage, for example, causing the roof of Lowe's in Winchester to collapse. It was also responsible for about $30 million in flooding following the meltdown which caused widespread flooding. These aerial views show flooding at Shenandoah Caverns, Mims Bottom, Burnshire Dam, and the South Fork of the Shenandoah River, which was 27 feet above normal. The blizzard of 96 also stopped local governments in their tracks as most meetings were postponed. But as things got back to normal, so did the new Shenandoah County Board of Supervisors. A whole new slate of officers took over with Beverly Fleming as the board's new chairman, and Larry Green became the new sheriff. We as a board are pleased to begin 1996 as a year with new direction and a firm commitment to responsive government. It's intent of this board to bring county government closer to its citizens. I would like to, uh, to work on a uh, high professional standing. I would like to see our department uh, uh, viewed very favorably by its peers and the people it serves. I want to see accountability from our sheriff's department for the way monies are spent. I want people to understand when monies are spent, why it's being spent, and that it is necessary. And speaking of government, Governor George Allen's State of the Commonwealth message focused on educating Virginia's youngsters. But we don't do our children any service when we just throw money at their education. Simply spending money is easy. But my friends, insisting on accountability takes courage and vision. Accountability is what's lacking in our schools today, and providing it will be the true test of leadership in education this session. Across the state of Virginia, school boards were elected for the first time since colonial days. In Warren County, divisions over whether or not to build a new high school divided the county and still does. The new school board asked Superintendent Sam Cook to resign. School Board Chairman Larry Andrews gave a $1,000 Chairman's Award for the best idea to improve the Warren County school system from his own pocket. Warren County Sheriff Lynn Armentrout and his 23-member drug task force brought in $600,000 worth of marijuana from a grower in Shenandoah Shores. He feels the D.A.R.E. program is working. The Warren County Chamber of Commerce Director Randy Collins relocated and was replaced by Winchester Chamber of Commerce Marketing Director Kitty Zuckerman. Zuckerman is daughter of former Winchester Mayor Charlie Zuckerman. One of the oldest farmers in Warren County sold his farm on Route 522 so that Family Dollar could build a distribution center on his land. Some county residents protested the way the property was zoned industrial from agricultural use after plans were made to create the distribution center. Bill? When we come back, we'll look at the tragedies that marred 1996. As you're decking the halls, lighting the lights, trimming the trees, and wrapping the gifts, take just a few moments to reflect on the reason for the season. My family and I do. That's why we really mean it when we say, have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. 
And thanks for helping make Grub Shovel AGO the hometown dealer with a heart. I'm Bobby Grubbs. I appreciate you. As functional as they are beautiful, rainbows of light elegantly displayed across your room, shimmering, dancing, altogether lovely. Chandeliers by Schoenbeck, with baskets in solid brass and, of course, Strauss crystal. Exclusively at Cardinal Electrical Supply, Stephen City. Understated elegance, a once-in-a-lifetime special purchase. Now at Cardinal Electrical Supply, there is no finer. You gotta love Spikers and GE appliances on display. You gotta love Spikers' guarantee of complete satisfaction with your new GE appliance. Love the guaranteed low price, too. And on the spot financing right in the store. You'll love Spikers' very personal service with every GE sold and factory authorized in store service and extended protection. You'll love the free delivery and setup, but best of all, you gotta love Spikers because they care. Welcome back to WAZT's Look Back at 1996. Well, aside from the snows and floods, the year had just barely gotten underway when a raging fire roared through one of Shenandoah County's historic landmarks. Rivered Inn, known for its valley cuisine, was destroyed in the pre-dawn hours Saturday, February 10th, burning much of the building and its contents. Firefighters were on the scene much of the day trying to bring the blaze under control. Seven guests were at the inn at the time of the fire, but everyone was alerted by the chef who awoke and called 911. No one was injured in the blaze. And a few months later, fire destroyed another business in the valley. Grand Piano and Furniture Store burned to the ground early Wednesday morning, May 15th. Fire and heavy smoke poured from the interior. Firefighters from all Winchester companies and five county units battled the blaze. The fire was so intense, it quickly spread throughout the entire structure. Flames were already shooting out the front of the store when the first engine company arrived. WAZT was on the scene moments after the fire broke out. Bill Leinberg, a Grand Piano employee, was in the store when the fire broke out and called in the alarm. I just, I, I went in, I turned on the lights and put on the coffee and I walked up and I heard a noise and I thought somebody had come in and I looked up and saw flames and I called 911 and left. The White Haven Animal Orphanage and Thrift Shop near Edinburgh burned Marge White's Haven for homeless animals and the community rallied to her aid by setting up funds for rebuilding. Some animals were lost in the fire. Fires were not the only tragedies in 1996. There were also several murders in the area. The area was stunned by a double homicide which remains unsolved in the Shenandoah National Park, 10 miles east of Luray near the Skyland Lodge. Two expert female hikers, Julianne Williams, 24, of St. Cloud, Minnesota, and Lolly Winnens, 26, of Unity, Maine, were found murdered with their throats cut in what appeared to be a hate crime. Foul play was ruled out in another park death when a State Department employee disappeared during Hurricane Fran. Approximately two months later, after search team efforts, the body was found and the cause of death was ruled an apparent suicide. Valley residents were also stunned to learn of the murder of Alicia Showalter Reynolds, a former resident of Harrisonburg. Miss Reynolds was reported missing Saturday, March 2nd. She was to meet her mother for a day of shopping in Charlottesville, but she never made it. Her car was found abandoned a few miles from Culpeper. And then, the news that everyone was hoping they wouldn't hear. Her body was found in a deserted logging trail near Lignum, Virginia. Her disappearance brought the community closer together and attracted nationwide attention. Police believe she was the victim of the Route 29 stalker, who pulls young women off the road by making them believe something is wrong with their cars. He's never been caught. Harrisonburg was also the scene of a double homicide of two James Madison University students. But the state was yet to hear the most gruesome of details of the murder of 12-year-old Valerie Smelzer, as her own mother went on trial for her murder. It was a story of torture, starvation, and eventually murder. Wanda Smelzer and her boyfriend, Norman Hoverter, were charged with Valerie's murder. 
Hoverter is serving life in prison, and Miss Smelzer was sentenced to 14 years in prison. The case was so tragic that State Senator Russ Potts introduced a bill to the General Assembly that created child abuse laws aimed at protecting young children. Lawrence Ambrogi, Frederick County's Commonwealth Attorney, summed up his feelings about the Smelzer trial. Well, I'm pleased. The judge heard all the evidence. There wasn't anything he didn't know about. And I respect his decision. I respect his sentencing. When we come back, some lighter news. A summer of fun. When dining out has to be special, special, it has to be McSilvey's. McSilvey's. A menu created by diners for diners, meticulously prepared and graciously presented. Truly something special for people who deserve something special. McSilvey's of Middletown, two doors north of the Wayside Theater. For the finest dining experience, nothing else is McSilvey's. McSilvey's. Make a fashion statement in a diamond ring from Blige Jewelers. Exquisite setting, flawless stones, and on sale for half of what you'd expect to pay. Blige Jewelers has special savings all through the store, like Vermeil or Silver Candy Kisses, necklaces, and earrings. Ready to give or get a new watch? Well, these timepieces are brand name bargains, just like these tennis bracelets or ladies' gold chains, 50% off. Buy from a jeweler, not just a jewelry store. Blige Jewelers, 101 North Loudon Street, the Old Town Mall, Winchester. Another special holiday season, another special holiday reason to send our greetings out your way for letting us serve you day by day. Yes, you're the one we want to thank for choosing Marathon to be your bank. From all three offices of Marathon Bank, Kernstown, Winchester, and Front Royal. Welcome back to WAZT's 1996, The Year That Was. Between the snow and runoff flooding early in 96 and the yet-to-come tropical storm Fran in the fall, Valley residents did enjoy a summer of fun at local festivals and fairs. Entire towns bloom with the hyacinths and the honeysuckle into spring festivals. Farmers bring their best produce to the fair, and their wives bring their best creations from that produce. The 4-H children give up the first fruits of their labor and say goodbye, some with tears, to the first calves and lambs and other livestock that they have raised. Winchester celebrates their Apple Blossom Festival. Front Royal has a Festival of Mushroom Festival, and Highland, West Virginia holds a Maple Festival. After spending the summers at the county fairs, Area localities bid farewell to the summer and celebrate the harvest with fall festivals. Winchester has Apple Harvest Craft Days. Edinburgh has the whole town turning out for an old-time festival. And Front Royal celebrates the Festival of Leaves. The fall of 96 saw a bill co-sponsored by Senators John Warner and Chuck Robb, which was years in the making and was aimed at increasing tourism in the state. Congress passed the Battlefield Protection Bill, which included second and third battles of Winchester, first and second battles of Kernstown, Fishers Hill, Cedar Creek, Toms Brook, and Newmarket. 1996 was also the bicentennial for the town of Newmarket, and they had many celebrations there throughout the year. Healthcare in the valley was vastly improved by the opening of Shenandoah University School of Pharmacy and improvements to the Lord Fairfax Health Department facility. During the first weekend in June, Woodstock hosts the Old Dominion 100-mile foot race, and the following weekend, Front Royal hosts the Old Dominion 100-mile horse race. Close to 75 participants run in each of the 100-mile races, which last nearly 24 hours. Horses cross the Shenandoah in places used by pioneers and Indians. In preserving our heritage, the Agape Baptist Church in Browntown replaced a steeple to the church's belfry, which had been missing for 50 years. Before the steeple could be placed on the church, a crew had to relocate about 80 bats, which had been living in the belfry. As if the flooding of the melting snow in January was not enough, Tropical Storm Fran dumped torrential rains on the valley, causing massive flooding costing over $28 million in damage. 
But damage could have been much worse had it not been for early preparedness, according to Beverly Fleming. And I'm particularly proud that we actually organized early. We got our uh, statement of emergency from the governor at noon on Thursday. And I made a declaration at 2.30 that afternoon. People say, what are you doing that for? The sun's shining, everything's bright. I said, well, we need, we need advance time to be prepared. And the, the result of that is that we had, in this county, no fatalities, no serious injuries, and much less demands on the emergency system. So I think that's a tribute to how well we were prepared and how well everybody functioned during the crisis. It was the wettest September in over 100 years with 12.22 inches of rain and the most rainfall ever recorded in a 24-hour period with 5.95 inches. By September, we had a yearly rainfall total of 51 inches, 25 inches above normal. The Riverton sections of Warren County had no electricity for nearly a week and town manager Lyle Lacey had to reopen the community swimming pool facility to the public so that area residents could take hot showers. Roads were closed by floodwaters and residents gathered on both sides of the North Fork River Bridge which was rendered impassable with the rising river which, quest, which crested around midnight. Stay with us. We'll be right back with Alan's weather forecast for the week and a look at Elections 96. The allure of outstanding design. Introducing the richly detailed collections of elegant and sophisticated fixtures by Progress Lighting. From classic brass and crystal to contemporary designs, Progress Lighting transforms lighting into an artistic complement for your interiors. Depart from the ordinary and discover the quality and prestige of Progress Lighting. Visit Payne Supply Incorporated in Front Royal and Edinburgh for all your lighting needs. Remember past winters when you couldn't buy a snow thrower anywhere? This year, Troy Built wants you prepared with the most reliable snow throwers ever made. Built with state-of-the-art steel augers, snowhawk tires, super reliable Tecumseh Snow King engines, and backed by a seven-year warranty only from Troy Built. So this winter, be prepared. See our whole line of Troy Built snow throwers at your nearest Troy Built dealer today. Woodstock Equipment Company, Route 11 North Woodstock, has the full line of Troy Built snow throwers. If you've been injured in an accident, you'll have to deal with insurance adjusters. It's important to understand that their job is to protect the best interests of their company, to be cautious and conservative. Unfortunately, this doesn't speed up the process of getting your car repaired or getting a rental car, let alone settling your injury claim. I'm Roger Ritchie. My law firm can help and we're as near as a phone. If an insurance company has you on hold, put our experience on your side. Call Roger Ritchie and Partners for a free consultation. Hi, Happy New Year. Welcome to the WAZT weather. I hope you had a nice day today, especially if you had the day off. I'm sure it was nice. Well, it's uh, back to normal schedules again tomorrow, believe it or not. Uh, I guess the kids will be getting back to school again. Uh, fortunately, they only have a couple of days of school this week. For them, it's fortunate. Uh, for the parents, uh, it'd be kind of nice to have a a full week of school, I'm sure. Well, we'll get that next week. But, hey, we're going to highlight a little bit of 1996. I thought we would do that real quickly and kind of get an idea of what we saw in 1996 as far as the weather is concerned. The coldest temperature was minus 15. Hey, that was pretty cold. Uh, February 5th. I remember what I was doing that morning. I was chopping wood that morning. Minus 15, the coldest temperature. The warmest temperature was only 98. Now, normally during the summer, we usually get at least a 100 degree temperature, maybe two or three times during the summer. This was a very mild summer, and we saw 98 as our highest temperature June 21st. The rest of the summer was a breeze. Biggest snowfall, 27 inches, at least in this immediate area. That was our uh, record uh, snowfall, January 6th and 7th and we had two major floods of course january 19th and that was due to all the melting snow we had a high temperature of 65 degrees that day and what snow was left which was about a foot and a half it melted all at one time plus the heavy rain a little over an inch of rain inch and a half of rain perhaps and then of course september 6th where many locations had as much as 10 inches of rain from hurricane fran which caused another major flood. 
here in the Shenandoah Valley. A flood like we had never seen before. Well, that's the highlights, weather-wise, right here in the Shenandoah Valley. Let's go to our weather map and see what's going to happen. Okay, for Thursday, it looks like uh, we're going to be in for some special weather, some nicer weather, actually, is heading our way, despite the fact that we saw that, well... Welcome back as we take a look at 1996, the year that was. 96 was also an election year. Virginians went to the polls electing a president and for members of both houses of Congress. But contrary to the rest of the country, the Valley voted for Bob Doe instead of Bill Clinton. And in the U.S. Senate, it was the name game. Republican John Warner or Democrat Mark Warner. It was the incumbent John Warner that was returned to the Senate. And in the House, 18-year veteran Frank Wolf had a landslide victory over Bob Weinberg. The Valley was also presented with five constitutional amendments on the ballot. Four out of the five made it through. Well, after this short break, we'll be back with the Bread of Life, and for the final year, one final look at 96. Yes, you can. You can make custom creations at home. Just look. The clothesline in Dayton is your complete sewing center. Tonight's slice from the Daily Bread of Life for this New Year's Day is from 2 Corinthians. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Well, this has been a very exciting 1996 look back as we approach this night, as, as actually we're into 1997, this very first day. And I know, Sandy, there are many things that impressed you as a reporter. Uh, one of the things that you covered that uh, I found was exciting was that flood uh, from Tropical Storm Fran. Kind of tell us about that. Uh, well, um Caitlin and I, my daughter and I, were out driving around looking for the footage, just trying to get to work, and it was incredible as we were discovering it as we came upon it. I know there was a telephone pole bobbing along Happy Creek, and the, the lines were down, the poles were shifted over by the McDonald's there, and mm -hmm. then I, I tried to get back home, and the roads just kept closing. I didn't know if I'd get back there. Right. It was yeah. it was. It was incredibly it awesome. It really was awesome. It and was. Uh, the one thing that impressed me about the footage that you got was that telephone pole had just about that much sticking up out of the water, so you know uh, mm -hmm. how much water was uh, along that Shenandoah River Bridge and uh, the awesome power involved with that flooding. And the, the people in Riverton, that's how they lost power, was mm -hmm. the waters flooded over right, the power yeah. lines. Yeah, well, well that sure incredible. was, you know, sure was something, and you did a great job on that. Uh, the one thing that impressed me was the. Um, the snows. It was such. It's been such a long time that we've had that much snow here in the Shenandoah Valley, and to come mm -hmm. within uh, just six days into the new year, that was uh, that was incredible too. And another thing that uh, I liked about uh, 1996 is that uh, WAZT had an opportunity to go to uh, the Smelzer trial to cover that. I mean, that was something yeah. that you know. And the Alicia Showalter Reynolds. And what happened there with the Smelser trial? Um, they wouldn't. They wouldn't well, let you take at, video. Well, right. Like, at first, no. Uh, at first, uh, they did not want us to go in uh, with our cameras during the trial. But they did. The judge, Judge James Berry, did allow us to go in for the sentencing. So we were able to take the cameras in, and we, so we got first-hand footage of uh, of that. So um, those are some of the things that uh, stick out in in my mind. My grandmother died this year, and your daughter graduated, graduated from JMU with and a 4.0 yeah. average. And your family <laughs> was uh, voted the 4-H family of the year in Fort Royal, so it has been a good year. And we could not end a look back at 1996 without mentioning the success of several local sports teams. Congratulations to Sharando High School football, Stonewall Jackson football, and Central Boys cross-country teams, all of whom competed at the state championship level. We want to give you one last look at Woodstock's own state championship as we say goodbye to 1996 and hello to 1997. Here are the last few seconds of the Central Lady Falcons State Group A championship win over the Hayseed Tigers, 52 to 47. <laughs> 
Dave was the second one. Up, off the rim, no good. Loose ball, battled for, on the floor, and that's it! The Central Falcons have won it. They're the champions of Group A girls basketball. And the celebration begins. The students onto the floor to help their team celebrate. And the Central Falcons have completed the 1996 season with the Group A state championship. What a year it has been. Hi, and welcome to another edition of In the Woods with Joe Lanon, where tonight we want to talk about two different things. First of all is hunting safety, and secondly, the deer meat giveaway program in Shenandoah County. Hunting season is through its first full week, and we're going to enter the second week of deer season here in a very short time period. Hunting safety begins with you, and hunting safety involves everyone that's in the woods in order to make the sport long-lasting and fun for everyone. This is the stupidest thing that I have said yet. <laughs> have received loans for 11,275 single-family units for a total loan amount of just over $927 million. For the evening eye, this is Sandy Flynn. <laughs> what? What happened? I would suggest that one of the one of the things that you would want to do is get to higher ground. It's not much you can do. You don't have a lot of time to to do anything at that point, other than try and gain uh, get to a safe area. <laughs> <laughs> This is where the action begins tonight at 8 o'clock, the Joey Chitwood Truck Show. Uh, it's sponsored by the Rotary Club. Price for adults is $7, for children 3 The Rotary Club has been sponsoring this event for years. Then we top it all off by uh, shooting a car 65 feet out of the world's largest cannon. Okay, and the proceeds again will go to the Rotary Club and and to your company. Right. Well, hopefully we're going <laughs> to we'll make... cut that off. Yeah. <laughs> okay, wait. Let, let's just. Get... Ay, ay, ay. He can't believe what he did, and he intends on never using or growing marijuana again. Is 522 industrial corridor and the recent rezoning of his farm from industrial use to agri. Wait. 54321. We all know that rivers are formed by nature, but yesterday a new man made river was formed to celebrate the completion of the new Opryland Hotel extension in Nashville, Tennessee. Like it or what? Five, four, three, two. Commuters from the valley to the D.C. area should be able to shave about 20 minutes off the drive time once the added lanes are open. Uh, let's see, is anything else here? Uh, I'll give him one. Um, no. Can you, um, next one. In anticipation of high-volume highway traffic during the Labor Day weekend, Colonel Wayne Huggins, the Virginia State Police Superintendent, is reminded... Let's start again. <clears throat> Take two. Five, four, three, two. In anticipation of high-volume highway traffic during the Labor Day weekend, Colonel Wayne Huggins, the Virginia State Police Superintendent, is reminding all travelers to drive safely and courteously. He urges everyone who gets into a car to buckle up, to refrain from drinking and driving, and to allow enough time to reach your destination. <laughs> 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 no. Five more. 
<laughs> I knew something was going to happen. Oh, shoot. Here we go. Let's do it again. I like the drink. Yeah, I know. I, I, don't, I cracked up on that, too. Drink. Uh, yeah, pull on, on the uh, where I got the little carrot there on driving. Yeah. Okay, here we go. See, we had to do this. In anticipation of high volume. Rockingham County announced today a bequest of nearly half. Oh, five, four, three, five, four, five, four, three, two. I can't get this to clear. Yeah, okay, I did. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Rockingham County announced today. I forgot your name. Tony Cusis. Tony Cusis? Cusis. We're here at the Front Royal Airport with Tony Cusis of the K Group. Expected to be much, high, much higher. And scientists also are saying that a reason for this would be the unusual... Right. You know, I'm just not having a good time. I feel like I'm doing a weather again. If you own outdoor pets, you may have noticed more ticks on them recently. There we go. Just don't get my name there. I'll get your address for uh, your friend. <laughs> <laughs> that good job. I had a darn thing on. Okay, now try it. Hey, car, car. the twisting capability of the shaft or from Winchester to Stanton with a complete look at today's news and weather this is WAZT news a 40-year career comes to an end for Winchester's police chief also today is Abraham Lincoln's birthday I'm Sandy Flynn and I'm Phil Luttrell well, Winchester Police Chief Alan Barley is stepping down after serving close to 40 years on the Winchester Police Force. Chief Barley joined the force February 1, 1957, starting out as a patrolman and working his way up through the ranks. He was appointed as chief in 1980. In recent months, his department has come under criticism, with two officers placed on administrative leave while an investigation has, was being conducted. Chief Barley decided yesterday that it was time to retire. I keep moving my retirement date up. I was going to retire, you know, young first. I thought I was going to retire young, and then I decided to maybe 58, and then maybe 60, and then maybe 62. And each one of those milestones came around. I was still excited about coming to work, still saw progress going on around me. And, and my last thought was perhaps to work on until I was 65. But the, you know, the hassles and stuff that's associated with my position, has made a decision that it wasn't worth it to continue to fight out these battles. All right, do you feel that you were pressured in any way to, to leave? Well, I don't want to comment as to whether someone actually pressured me to leave, but obviously there was a lot of pressures. Uh, people don't always agree on different perspectives. Uh, and no one really sit down and discuss those various issues and perspectives with me. Uh, is everyone just made their own decisions? Looking back on his career, Chief Barley reminisced about some of his accomplishments. Well, it's hard to uh, <clears throat> capture just everything during that entire span, but 
Uh, as chief, I'm proud of the fact that I was one of the people who was, uh, a man, well, kind of one of the driving forces to go with the 911 calls, which is an enhanced version of 911, uh, computer-aided dispatching, and uh, uh, we implemented the DARE program, and uh, reserve officers program, established an explorer's post. Barley's retirement was a surprise to some, and he will be missed by his fellow officers and officials. Winchester City Manager Ed Daly, who has worked with uh, Barley for 10 years, says it's a disappointment from the perspective of the years of experience the chief has brought to the force. Daly says it will be a major effort to fill that void. He says he has enjoyed working with Barley. Frederick County Sheriff Robert Williamson said today he hates to see Barley leave. He says over the years they have developed a good rapport and have worked jointly on several projects. He says Barley has been a good confidant and he will be sorely missed. Daly also said the city will be advertising for the position in professional magazines and journals. And June 30th will be the date that the chief will step down. In similar action, Edinburgh's police chief, who will resign in March, has been replaced by an officer who only six months ago graduated from the State Police Academy. James Weaver was appointed by the Edinburgh Town Council to head up the Edinburgh Police Department. Weaver joined the force June 1st of last year. Chief Robert Lawn will be stepping down after serving a year as chief. He says he wants to retire. Sandy? An arrest has been made in connection with the beating of a donkey who was taking part in a nativity scene during the Christmas holidays. 19-year-old Danny Harding of Harrisonburg reportedly told state police trooper Crane that he thought an, the attack on the donkey was a cool thing to do. Hardy is also charged with smashing the rear glass of a police cruiser with a baseball bat a week after the donkey incident. Broadway Police Chief Jay Lance was investigating a breaking and entering case where personal checks had been stolen and that led him to Hardy. Warrants are being issued also for other members of Hardy's group. The Wines family had been sending their donkey Bridey to the Broadway Presbyterian Church for many years to take part in the living nativity scene there. Bridey was tethered and found with facial bruises and bleeding from the nose. A steel pipe had been found nearby. The wines say that Bridey has been shy and less sociable since that attack. Well, stay with us on WAZT. When we come back, Harold Wetzel will be taking a look at what that possible meals tax means for Shenandoah County. But first, let's take a look at our commodities report. These figures provided by Linda Kelly of the Virginia Department of Agri-Market News. In Virginia, broiler supply is adequate for a good demand. Estimated slaughter today, 1,374,000 head. The estimated turkey slaughter, 142,000 head. On the Virginia egg market, prices were down 3 cents on large and mediums, 2 cents on small sizes today. The offering grain prices for the Harrisonburg area are as shown. And on the Virginia hog market, 33 cents lower at 69.21. You can really have some really rough weather here in Shenandoah Valley. That's why you need a really tough truck, the kind that Chevrolet makes. And that's why Grub Chevrolet is the tough truck headquarters for the valley. The big bruisers and the pick em ups too. When your plans call for trucks, call for the experts in the truck business at Grub Chevrolet. Route 11 North Woodstock. I'm Bobby Grubbs, and you have my word on it. At Grubb Chevrolet, a member of the GM Card Accelerated Network. At Marathon Bank, we believe that the people of the Shenandoah Valley deserve only the finest in financial services. That's why we offer checking with no monthly service charge and three locations to serve you. On Route 11 South of Winchester, Berryville Avenue, and in Front Royal. Marathon Bank, going the distance for you. You gotta love Spikers and GE appliances on display. You gotta love Spikers' guarantee of complete satisfaction with your new GE appliance. Love the guaranteed low price, too. And on the spot financing right in the store. You'll love Spikers' very personal service with every GE sold and factory authorized in store service and extended protection. You'll love the free delivery and setup, but best of all, you gotta love Spikers because they care. 
when you need good all-weather radial tires, inspect Cooper's Trendsetter 2. First of all, Trendsetter 2 is doggone economical. They last to a ripe old age. And Cooper's Trendsetter 2 has style, a radial with very good looks. Cooper's Trendsetter 2s give you long mileage and good gas economy. Mile after mile after mile. C.C. Rosen and Sons, location south of Mount Crawford and north of Newmarket. Virginia is known as the birthplace of presidents, but also it's the birthplace of a president's father. Abraham Lincoln's father, Thomas, was born on the Lincoln homestead, settled by Lincoln's great-grandfather near Lacey Springs on Route 42. Today, we remember the birth of Abraham Lincoln, born on this day in 1809. Lincoln became a legendary figure who cared more about ethics than money, a self-taught man who read law to become a lawyer and rode the circuit in Illinois for 20 years. As president, Lincoln led the North during the Civil War and became the great emancipator of slaves. He gave this well-known speech, the Gettysburg Address, which begins, four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Residents will make their wishes known March 18th when they vote on a referendum whether to have a 4% meals tax here in the county. Harold Wetzel, who reported on the story Tuesday, says the county could see as much as $200,000 additional revenue. And tonight, he tells what that money will be used for if the referendum passes. If that proposed meals tax referendum for Shenandoah County is passed by the voters on March 18th, the question still remains what the expected $200,000 in revenue will be spent on. A proposed budget for the Economic Development Council for fiscal year 1998 shows that almost $80,000 will be spent on salaries and benefits for two employees, an executive director and an assistant. $34,000 is earmarked as startup money for the council's office, $30,000 for promotions, $7,500 for travel expenses, and almost $38,000 will be in a reserve fund. Establishing a county meals tax would free up $120,000 in revenue from the lodging tax to be used solely for tourism. Currently, that money is divided between tourism and economic development. A draft budget for the Travel Council for fiscal year 1998 calls for the director's salary to increase from $12,000 to $20,000 if 100% of the lodging tax revenues are diverted for tourism use. This is Harold Wetzel reporting for WAZT News. Well, if a mega deal involving two of the nation's largest drug chains goes through, CVS Corporation stands to have the biggest volume of stores nationwide. CVS's acquisition of Revco Incorporated is for a reported $2.9 billion. CVS is doing what Rite Aid Corporation tried to do but failed in its attempt. Last year, Rite Aid tried to purchase Revco, but the Federal Trade Commission wouldn't approve the deal, saying Rite Aid would gain too much of the marketplace. Even though Rite Aid's acquisition attempt didn't go through, the drugstore chain is still very visible, and Woodstock residents will soon see some changes as Rite Aid prepares to build its new store. And there will also be the change of Woodstock's Revco store to CVS. The almost $3 billion deal will include Revco stores in Virginia, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York, and Georgia. Today is Ash Wednesday, which begins the season of Lent. Father Rule of St. John's Catholic Church in Front Royal reminds us that Ash Wednesday shows us that we are made of dust, and to dust we shall return. We prepare for this death during the season of Lent. Paul Sheet of First Baptist Church in Woodstock says that this is a time of preparation for Easter and Easter week, and in preparing for this time, Lent is a t time of fasting and sacrifice, such as giving up something that you enjoy and focusing on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and the Resurrection. Stay with us coming up tonight, Child Passenger Safety Week.
Don't let winter blow you away or cover you up. Yardman and MTD snow throwers clear the way, can handle anything from sidewalks to office parks. Move winter out of the way with Yardman throwers. Clear paths with a model 6637, a full 10 horsepower at $9.99. Or the MTD Gold Series 8 horsepower with headlights and chains, $799.95. Come by Newmarket, True Value Hardware. Check out the Yardman and MTD snow thrower right for you. Newmarket, True Value Hardware. They service what they sell with a complete up-to-date parts and service center. You may be a secretary, a construction worker, a mechanic, or a homemaker, and that's what you're good at. So if you're confused and frustrated by all the problems that come from being hurt in an accident, you're not alone. Getting injured isn't something you study in school or on the job. I'm attorney Roger Ritchie. For more than 20 years, we've worked hard to help people in all walks of life be treated fairly when they've been injured. It may happen to you once in a lifetime, but helping you deal with it is our job. Call Roger Ritchie and Partners for a free consultation. The allure of outstanding design. Introducing the richly detailed collections of elegant and sophisticated fixtures by Progress Lighting. From classic brass and crystal to contemporary designs, Progress Lighting transforms lighting into an artistic complement for your interiors. Depart from the ordinary and discover the quality and prestige of Progress Lighting. Visit Payne Supply Incorporated in Front Royal and Edinburgh for all your lighting needs. Welcome back now to WAZT News for this Wednesday. Phil Luttrell along with Sandy Flynn. Well, if you're a parent with small children, you should be aware of the use of child safety restraints. And since this is National Child Passenger Safety Awareness Week, you're encouraged to make sure your young children are put in proper safety seats anytime they are in a vehicle. This year's theme is Patterns for Life, which extends beyond using safety seats and seat belts. It includes good safety habits for young pedestrians and bicyclists. Motor vehicle injury is a leading killer of children more than one year of age. State police report that there are too many children seriously injured or killed in preventable crashes. The National Highway Traf uh, Traffic Safety uh, administration reports child safety seats when correctly used can reduce fatalities among children less than five years of age by 71 percent. NHTSA recommends rear-facing seats until your child is 20 pounds and at least one year of age. Children up to 40 pounds should face forward. Booster seats should be used until your child can use the vehicle's seat belts. Not all injuries happen inside vehicles, by the way. Figures show one-third are pedestrians. It's important to teach children the rules for safe walking and biking. Look both ways, walk, don't run, use crosswalks, and make sure you use helmets when cycling. Sandy? A front royal man pleaded guilty yesterday to distributing cocaine and faces up to 40 years in prison and up to a half million dollar fine. 33-year-old Hedgeman Turner kept the drugs hidden inside a cavity inside his artificial leg, and then he would take them out of his false leg during the drug sale. He sold the drug to an informant, which the Regional Drug Task Force recorded with a camera and a tape recorder. Commonwealth Attorney Walter Hibbard dismissed the charge of selling cocaine in a drug-free school zone because the drug sale occurred in a car. Turner is scheduled for sentencing on April the 7th. Phil? Well, promoting the Old Dominion comes in various ways, but one of the more recent popular ones is license plates. And legislators in the Virginia General Assembly are taking a look at adding more designs to vehicle license plates. A recent contest sponsored by the Division of Motor Vehicles produced several samples of decorative plates. One of the contest winners is from the northern Shenandoah Valley. Katie Polk, a ninth grade student from Sharando High School in Frederick County, came up with a leaf design which won her first place. The new plates will go on sale May 1st. Now, the new additions will be for organizations, and there will be two additional scenic plates. According to Jeannie Chenault, public relations officer in Richmond, the cost will be between $10 to $25 more than the regular plates. In order for the DMV to issue special plates, there must be at least 350 applications for the plates. That's a minimum. Many people in the Winchester area were disappointed because the special Apple Blossom Festival design plates weren't issued due to a lack of applications. So if you belong to an organization or a charitable group, just contact your state legislator and tell him or her what your idea is. 
All right, stay with us here on WAZT News. When we come back, Alan Earhart will tell us what we can expect for the next couple of days, and it may not be what you want to hear, but we'll let Alan tell you about that and take the heat for it. Alan. <laughs> Yes, you can. You can make custom creations at home. Just look. The Clothesline in Dayton is your complete sewing center. Novice or Pro, the place to go for the supplies, accessories, and notions you want. And the Clothesline features these top quality Bernina sewing machines, Burnett. Chester to Stanton with a complete look at today's news and weather. This is WAZT News. Good evening and welcome to WAZT Local News for this Friday, June 18th. In the headlines, the state Supreme Court upholds the death penalty of a new market man. And as Father's Day approaches, we'll be taking a look at one special father tonight. I'm Sandy Flynn. And I'm Rhonda Lee. Virginia Supreme Court heard, considered, and rejected Tommy David Strickler's appeal of his conviction and subsequent death sentence for the 1990 murder of JMU student Leanne Whitlock. The 7-2 decision leaves the Augusta County Circuit Court with 10 business days to set an execution date. Strickler's attorneys had petitioned the high court saying state prosecutors violated Strickler's rights by withholding evidence in the case. Justice John Paul Stevens wrote for the court that there was no reasonable probability that Strickler's conviction or sentence would have been different had those materials been disclosed. Police and prosecutors had not disclosed before trial the testimony of an eyewitness who said she saw Ms. Whitlock abducted from the Harrisonburg Walmart parking lot. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has unveiled a $17.5 million plan to return the former Avtex fiber site in Front Royal back to the community for recreational and other uses. This plan calls for cleaning up the sulfate basins and removing mountains of fly ash at the Superfund site. The area will then be covered with new topsoil that will support all types of vegetation. The EPA hopes to complete the project by the fall of 2001 and then to turn the site over to the town and the county. The EPA continues to monitor the site for environmental problems after that. Matt Lauer of Broadway will be the keynote speaker for the 78th Annual Virginia 4-H Congress at Virginia Tech on June 28th. The Congress will be in Blacksburg June 28th through the July 1st. Some 700 members are expected to attend. 4-H members will compete in events and community service projects during those four days. Lauer is a former state FFA president and national vice president. His keynote speech will be at 7 p.m. on the 28th. The Central High School FFA chapter has received both the Senior and Junior Sweepstakes Awards for the best organizations in the Massanutten Federation. Nathan Gokenauer of Central has been named Star Massanutten Farmer and Bridget Sign, also of Central, Star Agribusiness Person. Central's Rebecca Kaufman placed first in the Federation Record Book competition and Vicki Heisman was first in the Secretary's Book Contest. The awards were announced at the Massanutten Federation's annual picnic held recently in Luray. Now let's check those commodity prices as reported to WAZT by Linda Kelly of Virginia Agri-Market News. The end is near, but for Grub Chevrolet, that means a new beginning for the next millennium. Grub Chevrolet is working hard to focus on its customers, like our new After Hours Shopper's Box, which helps us get prompt answers to your questions even after 5 p.m. Plus, our new service and parts hours have been extended to 8 to 12 on Saturday, and we're now your local Starfire Tire Dealer. Last but not least, our service department entrance is covered, so you won't have to worry about the weather. Grub Chevrolet, after 40 years, it just keeps getting better. You do have choices. You can pay much less for funeral arrangements. Hundreds have called Winchester's Cartwright Funeral Home for sincere, sympathetic service. Sometimes the suddenness of death usually leaves us bewildered, confused, and alone. It doesn't have to be that way. This home-like atmosphere is available for pre-need arrangements or immediate care. Call and ask to have a representative visit and discuss future plans. No obligation, of course. For more than 50 years, another choice in the Northern Valley, Cartwright Funeral Home, Winchester. It's us again, here to tell you about the exciting new services we now offer. Not only can you get great service on exhaust, brakes, shocks, struts, alignment, suspension, 
But we now offer Valvoline oil changes, Anco wiper blades, headlight and bulb replacement, along with our new fuel cleaning system. Save up to $40 on Midas brand brake pads and shoes with our mail-in rebate offer. So remember, what can we do for you today? Midas Muffler, 824 South Loudon Street, 665-0625. Celebrate this season of the Shenandoah Summer Music Theater in Winchester, Virginia with four Broadway musicals that have something to offer everyone. Each production will be professionally performed with a complete chorus. Fresh sets and costumes for each show accompanied by a full live orchestra. These shows are truly what the American Musical Theater is all about. Bring the whole family. For information and reservations, call 540-565-4569. Welcome back to WAZT's local news. The rivalry is gone now, except for the odd alumni tennis matches between Augusta Military Academy and Fishburne Military School, both post-Civil War institutions. Now with Augusta Military Academy closed, Fishburne Military School has invited the progeny of AMA alumni to attend. And now for the first time in 60 years, the school is in the middle of a $2.1 million project with plans that were formulated in 1918. The building will be home to a new library, computer center, weightlifting facility, locker rooms, and a wrestling room. And it will be named for 1932 graduate J. Thomas Hubby, Jr., who is putting up half of the financing, and Colonel Morgan Hudgens, who was superintendent from 1913 until 1952 and formulated those 1918 plans. It was Hudgens who had the plans to build a similar facility on the site 80 years ago. And it is hoped that Hobby Hudgens Hall will be a drawing card for Fishburn. The balance of the project is being financed through low interest bonds issued by the Alexandria Industrial Development Authority. This Saturday, the Wildlife Center of Virginia will offer two classes at Lord Fairfax Community College in Middletown on wildlife rehabilitation. The two courses are wildlife capture and restraint and wildlife emergency stabilization. Fees for the two classes are $30 and $35, respectively. Those interested in attending the classes will learn about precautions, safety concerns, and problems with injuries associated with dealing with wildlife. The first class begins at 10 a.m. with pre-registration at 9.30. Students must be at least 12 years old. Next Tuesday, the town of Mount Jackson will hold a public hearing on the issue of whether to raise its food tax rate. The town's 2% food tax is the lowest rate in, the Shenandoah, in Shenandoah County. Newtown manager Charlie Moore says that several capital improvement projects have led to the idea of raising the food tax in order to generate the needed revenue for those projects. According to state code, the food tax could be doubled to 4%. Well, it's Friday, and time now for our regular Friday feature, In the Woods, with Joe Lanin. Tonight, Joe has part two of his visit to the River's Edge Environmental Study Area. Joe? Hi, welcome to another edition of In the Woods with Joe Lane, and where tonight I have once again as my guest, Ron Roller, the senior agriculture teacher at Strasburg High School, who's been around here for quite a while now, haven't you, Ron? 30 years. 30 years. That's a long time, Ron. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Qualifies for retirement. Yeah, there you go. We are at the River's Edge Environmental Study Area again tonight, and Ron, this project has been a cooperative effort from the start. Over the past probably year or so, you've had a lot of partners involved with this project, a lot of people who've shown interest in it. Kind of tell us again who's been helping you out and a little bit about what their participation has been. Well, Joe, this is a, such a large project that we just couldn't handle it ourselves. So through a grant from the Center for the Chesapeake Communities, uh, we were able to get the financial support that we needed to to hire the right people uh, through the Lord Fairfax Planning District Commission. Um, they were uh, good enough to administer the finances and all the paperwork for us. Uh, Dennis Fowler, um, who is a habitat enhancement specialist, brought his equipment in and with his guidance and uh, expertise were able to uh, put the pro program the project in place. Uh, we have several other organizations, all your government organizations, including Department of Forestry and Natural Resources Conservation Service. Um, we considered their advice and, and used their support 
Um, the Columbia Gas Transmission Corporation uh, became a corporate sponsor of the project. Um, the National Wild Turkey Federation has a program in place called the Superfund, and they were kind enough to donate some money to help support uh, our habitat efforts. I understand that you even had um, even smaller groups like uh, the local garden club who came out here and helped you with some of the plantings and, and some of the beautification of the entrance. Well, the Mass Nutton Garden Club uh, helped uh, some of our students design an entrance to, to kind of beautify the area. Um, so they were real active in, in providing some of the plants uh, that were needed to, to make the area look nice. Well, Ron, this is certainly a wonderful project and a great community effort. It's a sight to see, and, and for all of those folks in the Strasburg area and really throughout Shenandoah County and southern Frederick County, we invite you out here to see it during the daylight hours. And is it open on the weekends? It'll be open every day that, that we can have it open, the weather permits. Okay, very good. This is Joe Lane, and hoping you have a good evening. So many things have changed over the years, but your local Good Neighbor Pharmacy understands that some things never change. A reliable product and good value for the money are always in style at Good Neighbor Pharmacy. Hello, I'm Randy Fansler, your Good Neighbor Pharmacist in Newmarket. Good Neighbor Pharmacy, old-fashioned values at a modern-day pharmacy. Prepaid Cellular from Shenandoah Cellular is cellular made simple. No worry, no contract, no credit check. Easy to use, Cellular Phone comes loaded with prepaid airtime, and you can buy additional airtime when you need it. Use your prepaid Cellular Phone in the local area or across the U.S. Call or visit Shenandoah Cellular in Winchester or Front Royal or any Shenandoah Cellular authorized agent to get details. Cellular made simple. Prepaid from Shenandoah Cellular. If you have a family car, Cooper Tires Lifeliner Classic is the touring radial. Perfect on hills and in valleys. Cooper's Lifeliner Classic is an all-season radial designed for all sorts of weather, like rain or snow. And Cooper's Lifeliner Classic has a 60,000-mile limited treadwear warranty. C.C. Rosen and Sons, location south of Mount Crawford and north of Newmarket. Western State Hospital in Stanton, as well as other state-run mental institutions, have come under close scrutiny this past year as investigations into mistreatments, even deaths of patients, are being conducted. Hospital records reveal that nothing was done to assist mental patient Maura Patton, who died in Western State Mental Hospital July 7, 1997. She did telephone family members to let them know she was dying four days before she was found dead in her hospital bed. Patton nearly died from respiratory failure in 1994, and she was denied use of her inhaler when she began wheezing at Western State just days before her death. Patton's brother is now seeking $1 million in compensatory damages and $5 million in punitive damages, according to a lawsuit which was filed yesterday. The National Gaming Impact Study Commission released its two-year report today, and 10th District Virginia Congressman Frank Wolf was the sponsor of the legislation that created the commission. In a news release, Congressman Wolf said he was pleased that the final approval of the commission's report came on a unanimous vote from a panel that included people like Dr. James Dobson, a focus on the family ministries as well as advocates for the gambling industry. The commission has recommended a moratorium on any further gambling expansion in the U.S. until more is known about the effects of gambling addictions and families and communities. Congressman Wolf went on to say that gambling addiction is a real problem affecting over 20 million Americans, and Congress must seize the opportunity presented by the commission's report to take a hard look at gambling and its influences. Father's Day is this Sunday, and there are some special fathers here in the Shenandoah Valley. Dorothy Harriman with the Department of Social Services says there are 12 fathers who are participating in the foster care program in Shenandoah County that has 41 children in placement at this time. There is a need for more foster care families with only 17 approved here in Shenandoah County. When there isn't room locally for foster children, they have to be placed outside of the county and Harriman says it's better to keep the children as close to home as possible 
because it's harder on everyone involved with outside placements. We spoke with the adoptive father of three children and foster parent, Dr. Richard Milligan, who has been foster parent to at least seven children at this time. Dr. Milligan says that part of being a father is being a role model for children. And kids need a positive role model. They need um, uh, someone these days to, uh, little boys need to know what it means to be a man and what the uh, uh, values are that, that men are to hold, the, the duties that they have, um, the ways that they are to uh, uh, be towards other men, towards their wives, towards their children. And unfortunately, you don't see a lot of that. I just want to let the audience know that I do agree with Richard. There is a large need for foster fathers in our community. I think locally we have about um, 12 foster fathers who are very active and do a lot of things with our children. Um, they provide a wonderful role model. They give their time, their energy, and their love, um, and their affection to our children. And I think that's something that our children really benefit from. We had the opportunity to meet Dr. Milligan's family, his wife Laurel and children, Andrea, Mason, and Daniel. Happy Father's Day! Craig, it looks like we had some beautiful, beautiful rain yesterday, but what's it looking like for Father's Day? Well, Rhonda, we did have some much needed rain yesterday. Today was beautiful, lots of sunshine. And it looks like Sunday's going to be okay, too. Lots of sunshine throughout the weekend. I'll have the forecast coming up in just a minute right here on WAZT. Be a more beautiful you every day. Let Patty and Teresa of In His Image find just the right cut, perm, color, or highlight, the one that suits you perfectly. Manicures, pedicures, and waxing, whatever it takes from head to toe to be a more beautiful you. It all begins at In His Image next to the Spring House in Woodstock. Call 459-4730. 459-4730 for In His Image. Go ahead, blow the horn, kick the tires, slam the doors. Do all those things people are supposed to do when they buy a vehicle. Then do the things smart buyers do when they deal with Woodstock Garage. Get a van for hundreds less than you thought possible. Get every penny a factory rebate, at least $1,000. Be amazed at the high... Winchester to Stanton, with a complete look at today's news and weather, this is WAZT News. Good evening and welcome to WAZT Local News for this Thursday, June the 17th. In the headlines, a large fish kill along the Shenandoah River has investigators baffled. And another local school board considers a dress code. Good evening, I'm Rhonda Lee. And I'm Sandy Flynn. The State Department of Environmental Quality has ruled out any kind of toxic dumping as the cause of a fish kill in the Shenandoah River near Woodstock. A large number of dead fish found near Spring Hollow on the North Fork of the River 
were reported last month to the DEQ. While the agency is still investigating this fish kill and have not reached any definite conclusions, investigators have ruled out toxicity. According to Dan Kane of DEQ's Harrisonburg office, living fish in the river are healthy and show no signs of toxicity. Disease may also be ruled out as a probable cause, but the area's drought could be a contributing factor. Frederick County may follow Rockingham County's lead in approving a dress code for students this fall. Although officials in Frederick County say they are not reacting to recent school violence, the proposed dress code would allow students and principals in the county to ban clothing linked to gang activity, disruptive to the educational environment, or clothing deemed unsafe. The changes in the dress code have been recommended to the school board, which will most likely vote on the proposal on July 6th. Agriculture has evolved here in the Shenandoah Valley to include crops of soybeans. There are about 3,000 acres at the present time, thanks to the assistance of Shenandoah County Extension Agent Bobby Clark. Clark has been working with Virginia Tech and private companies to introduce crops which help farmers. This test field of soybeans has 14 varieties, and Bobby Clark will monitor those varieties for performance in this locality. The biggest thing that we're looking for is yield data on the different types of beans that we have here. But some farmers also get interested in uh, the time that they pollinate and germinate, I mean at the time that they set seed and the height of the soybean because that affects how low to the ground they have to run their combine heads and so forth. But pretty much it comes down to just yield. Some benefits of planting soybeans include a rotation with corn that increases corn production. Clark says that the crop of soybeans does not require any pesticide use. No, actually, soybeans don't need uh, very much pesticide at all. No one that I know of applies any insecticide to soybeans. Um, they are an alternative to corn, and many times if you use soybeans in a rotation, it helps reduce the amount of insecticide you need for growing corn, which helps out in terms of, of expenses and is also better on the environment. Although the soybean market is depressed right now, the future does look bright for soybeans. Now let's look at those soybean prices as well as the other commodity prices across the state. These figures provided by Linda Kelly of the Virginia Department of Agri-Market News. Go ahead, blow the horn, kick the tires, slam the doors. Do all those things people are supposed to do when they buy a vehicle. Then do the things smart buyers do when they deal with Woodstock Garage. Get a van for hundreds less than you thought possible. Get every penny a factory rebate, at least $1,000. Be amazed at the high trade-in you'll get. The five-star rating means you'll do better at Woodstock Garage, 601 North Main Street, Woodstock, where service after the sale is second to none. The Cove Campground, recreation for the whole family. For reservation information, call 858-2882. It's going on now. The weekend sale at Spiker's Appliance and Electronics. Every item is tagged with huge price reductions. A savings event of the best name brands. The weekend sale. Pay no interest for one year store wide through Saturday. Get a 51 inch Panasonic stereo surround sound TV now $15.99. Or a Panasonic 27 inch stereo TV now $3.99. Sensational savings now. The weekend sale at Spiker's Appliance and Electronics. The Center for Flowers, Plants, Silk Arrangements, Wreaths, and so much more. At the center of it all, the Flower Center in Stevens City and Apple Blossom Mall. The Center for Corsages, Weddings, Special Events, and Do-It-Yourself Arranging. At the center of it all, the Flower Center in Stevens City and the Apple Blossom Mall. Cash and Carry Rose is still the best bargain anywhere. When it comes to flowers, come to the Flower Center.
Welcome back. Well, it's on its way to greatness. By December, Shenandoah County government will have a new home. I spoke with Mary Beth Price, Assistant County Administrator, for the pro about the progress of this multi-million dollar project. An old school gets a new look. Public outcry saved it from the wrecking ball. Since the public saved it, the public gets to use it. Okay, what we're trying to do is uh, make it more convenient for the public. So we are uh, consolidating a lot of the county offices. Right now we rent a lot of locations. So the health department will be moved here, social services, the emergency communications center, the cooperative extension, uh, economic development and tourism, county administration, the treasurer's office, the commissioner of revenue, planning and code enforcement, which includes the uh, building inspections, um, voter registration, and the boardroom will be here, and school board will house the second floor. The whole project began in 1995. It cost over four million dollars to build. Right now it's slated to be open in late December, but hopefully it'll be ready to use before that. Because there are Y2K concerns, the Emergency Communication Center wants to make sure they are ready before the new year. At this point, um, they may be a week or two behind schedule on a few things and on schedule on others, but uh, I feel they'll make that up. Price said they have 54,000 square feet to be proud of. This is definitely going to be a blessing for everyone. In Woodstock, I'm Rhonda Lee, WAZT News. Thank you for that story, Rhonda. Volunteers really do make a difference, and for the Winchester Police Department, volunteer officer Danny Bly will be missed by the force. For the past 18 years, Winchester jeweler Danny Bly spent at least 16 hours each month as a member of the Winchester Police Force Reserves. He was regarded as an equal by those career officers. The fact is that reserves are a very uh, valuable asset. Uh, and with departments that generally operate on with short manpower, with people needing time off, vacations and such, uh, the volunteers it just added to the to the manpower and, and were just as valuable as a career officer because whenever you looked around and saw one approaching you to back up, you knew that you had as much backup there as you would from a career officer. Over the course of nearly two decades of service, Bly donated over 3,200 hours of his time to protecting officers and local citizens. Some things have changed, however, over those years. Um, we're not respected as, uh, or weren't, or uh, respected as much now as, uh, as as we used to be. And you know, I think it's interesting because I think that law enforcement itself takes a, a more public friendly approach and a softer approach towards people than say for example 40 years ago and I don't think we're as respected now as we were then. Winchester police are still looking for a few good men to assist police with the reserves. Shenandoah Valley motorists are lagging behind much of the Commonwealth in organ donor requests. The latest figures show 64,000 people indicated a desire to be part of the program, but most of those requests came from new drivers or renewals in the metro areas of Northern Virginia, Tidewater, and the Capital Region. DMV continues a concerted effort to enlist drivers in the program in all areas of the state. And we'll be back after these messages. Well, it's a big deal we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, big deal. <laughs> big deal. Well, I only make big deals. Big deals, honey. I'm a big man. <laughs> mm -hmm. Honey, I do nothing that's small. <laughs> Uh-oh. Better get Mako. Car repairs aren't a big deal when you come to Mako. Free body estimates and ambassador paint service for $189.95 are the big reason to say, Uh-oh, better get Mako. You're leaking! Folks always like what they see on the Hartman Motor Sales lot, but it's what you'll find behind the scenes that keeps customers coming back. The Friendly Service Department specialty teams will ensure your complete satisfaction. Take advantage of the Hartman Motor Sales courtesy van or relax in the new customer waiting lounge. And you'll find that Hartman Motor Sales employees are like family, a team who takes pride in going the extra mile for you, their customer. is working together to make you number one. Dad, can we make our room this color? Ace computers can match just about any color. 
Ace knows paint because Ace makes its own paint. You can be sure of a quality job with Ace Paints. Bring your color choice to Ace at C.E. Thompson Stony Creek Boulevard, Edinburgh. Color your world beautiful with Ace. My question to you tonight, do you know that you're forgiven? If you were to die tonight, would you be acceptable to God? The Billy Graham Evangelistic Association presents... You come to Christ tonight with all of your sin, with all of your guilt, He'll forgive you. You can leave here a changed man, a changed woman, forgiven. Franklin Graham in Jamaica. Thank you for joining us tonight on WAZT. Front Royal Town Council has approved its fiscal 2000 budget of $23.3 million. Included in this budget is an increase for both water and sewer rates for town residents. Sewer rates will increase almost 8%, going from $6.45 up to $6.96 per 1,000 gallons on the base rate. And the additional rate is from $4.63 up to $5 for each additional 1,000. One water rates will also increase 10.5% from $4.63 up to $5.12 for each additional 1,000 gallons, while the base rate for the first 1,000 gallons will remain at $6.45. Both the town's real estate and personal property taxes remain unchanged. A West Virginia couple has pled guilty to 14 drug charges in Shenandoah County. Robert and Donna Hintz face charges stemming from a Shenandoah County Sheriff's Department nine investigation nine months ago. Investigators worked on the case from January to September 1998 as part of the Northwest Region Drug Task Force. The couple was arrested September 11th last year and charged with distribution of methamphetamines. Other charges came through direct indictments, according to the Assistant Commonwealth Attorney Albert Mitchell. Each of the 14 charges carries a maximum sentence of 40 years in prison and a $50,000 fine. More on the trash wars here in Virginia, while Houston-based Waste Management sues the Commonwealth over four new state laws. The Department of Environmental Quality reports that Virginia landfills took in more than four and a half million tons of, of out-of-state garbage last year. That figure up one and a half million from 1997. According to two private environmental groups, seven large private landfills took four million tons out of the state gar out of state garbage. Last winter, the General Assembly passed laws aimed at curbing the import of out-of-state garbage at the urging of Governor Gilmore. The state has accused Waste Management Incorporated of illegally dumping regulated medical waste in Virginia's landfills. And Rhonda, here locally, Winchester residents may soon have to pay for dumping trash at the Frederick County landfill. City Refuse Supervisor Eric Roller presented a proposal to City Council Committee calling for residents and not the city to pay for those dumping fees for private vehicles that are larger than three quarters of a ton. The Frederick County Landfill charges $28 per ton for dumping. Last year, Winchester spent $2,500 a month on private loads. Winchester residents are allowed to make as many trips as they wish to the landfill, and the new proposal probably won't affect most citizens. But Roller says some large loads may, in fact, be commercial rather than private, and the city may have been taken advantage of. Harrisonburg attorney Walter Green has decided not to run against Delegate Glenn Weatherholtz for the 26th District State House seat. Green said last summer that he would oppose two-term incumbent Weatherholtz, but later found that he would have to move his residence to do so. Filing deadlines have now passed for most all political offices here in the Valley, and it looks like only two area incumbent legislators will be opposed. In the 25th District, Republican Steve Landis will face Green Party candidate Sherry Stanley and the and in the 58th district, Republican Paul Harris will be challenged by Democrat Edward Whalen. Alan Lauterbach is running unopposed in the 15th district, as is Russ Potts in the 27th. State Senators Kevin Miller and Emmett Hanger are also running unopposed. This week's Crime of the Week for Winchester Frederick County involves the break-in and larceny at 106 Siler Road in Winchester. Someone entered the residence by breaking a pane of glass in the basement door and unlocking the deadbolt. Several items were stolen, including credit cards. Anyone with information is asked to contact Crime Solvers. You may remain anonymous. Information could bring a, re a reward of up to $1,000. Well, Alan... 
Can we expect any more of that beautiful rain? Well, Sandy, after that real nice rain, it looks like we deserve a real nice weekend, too. And it looks like things are looking beautiful this weekend. We'll have details in just a moment. At the clothesline, they'll count the buttons, count the stitches, count their blessings, but they don't want to count the inventory. That means major savings for you. 25% store-wide June 28th and 29th. Unless it's on consignment or handmade, if it's there, it's on sale. The entire stock of Bernina and Burnett products reduced for the pre-inventory sale June 28th and 29th. Sewing machines, sergers, embroidery machines. You can count on the clothesline in Dayton for great values. The pre-inventory sale June 28th and 29th at the clothesline Route 42 South Dayton. The quiet time, the hush of evening, and Cardinal Electrical Supply helps you light your night with outdoor fixtures by Hinkley. Outdoor low-voltage illumination, as beautiful as it is functional, and you trust the Hinkley quality. Cardinal Electrical Supply of Stephen City has a wide variety of Hinkley outdoor fixtures in stock. Enjoy living outdoors in a new light. Cardinal Electrical Supply, Green at Mulberry and Stephen City, help you light your night with Hinkley. It's a gift shop, a pawn shop, a gun shop. It's an antique shop, a flag shop, a curio shop, a fountain shop. It's a sword shop, a designer shop, an art shop, and a whatnot shop. It's Simon Petrie's. Everyone knows the name. Everyone's seen the shop. Now's the time to come in and find out what's in store for you. Simon Petrie's. Different strokes for different folks, but everyone finds what they want. A mile north of Skyline Drive on US 340 Front Royal. Selling and buying antiques and new guns, swords, flags, and jewelry. The unusual as usual, Simon Petrie's. Reliable, informed, qualified, and concerned about your needs. Words that describe Bly's Jewelers on the Loudoun Street Mall in downtown Winchester. People come back year after year after year, and people respect Danny Bly's knowledge of timepieces, precious stones, and more. And as a professional horologist, Danny takes pride in every repair. Here is Bly's Jewelers, much more than just a jewelry store, on the downtown mall, Winchester. Hi, welcome to the weather. I'm Alan Earhart. Good to be back with you again. It's the Thursday edition. This is mowing day, isn't it? Yeah, mowing day <laughs> edition of the weather. And uh, this was one day that I'm glad that it rained on mowing day. Believe me, I'll tell you, it's been so long since we've had any measurable rainfall. And uh, today we had rain, well, on and off throughout the day today.